Hello everyone, Jason here once again with Inkspit Designs. Got a tutorial for you today, a uh, little bit different. We did this logo for a, a customer of ours a little while back, DNM Williams Custom Photo Prints. Um, they do ink sublimation. You, know, you can put a picture on uh, of your kids or anything you want on a mug or on a, a bag or a cell phone case. I actually ordered a cell phone case from them with uh, the Inkspit Designs logo on it as well as a, a mug. So they send that to me. They do great work. Um, you can find a link to their where they're at on Facebook and their stuff um, below in the description. So check them out. Uh, but we went through a couple different ideas, and this is the idea and the colors that they wanted to go with uh, for their logo. Kind of a retro badge type of a, a design type of a logo. And so uh, this is what we came up with. So I want to want to go through a little bit of this with you today because um, it it uses heavily the appearance panel, and I want to sh share with you so you know how. Uh, important the appearance panel can be how it's one of the most powerful things in Illustrator I think uh, for getting stuff done quickly and having it to be able to edit it later so let's go ahead and look at this um, over here I've got some of the pieces just so I can reference it uh, because every time I'm doing these this type of stuff I always tinker with things different and things usually end up coming out different so we'll see how it goes <coughs> excuse me okay so here's the ribbon piece and uh, let's go ahead and take this appearance panel we're going to pull it out here and we're going to see what's going on. Um, we're going to put it back to zero. We want to give it a, a black fill. Okay, so here it is, just a solid shape. Uh, now we're going to work down here in this, uh, this new layer. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do first is give it a, another fill. And uh, we're going to drag that behind the other fill. And we're going to make that white. And actually, since the background's white, we should uh, give it another color so we can see it a little bit easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to offset the path to make it stick out behind that uh, that other shape. All right, so we want it oh about there or so, and then we're going to add another fill, and we're going to put that one behind the first one. We're going to make that one black. And we're going to offset it as well. And let's do that. All right. And just so you can see that it's edible after the fact, I can go back to this, this purple uh, outline shape I did. And I want to shrink it down a little bit more. So I'm going to click back on it. And uh, as I do that, you see the other line becomes thicker because it's actually sitting behind the, the purple path. So I want it about there. But now I want to go back to that black line and I want to shrink it down a little bit as well to make it not as thick. Okay, there we go. So now I want you to notice something. If I click on this single shape, you come up here to the layers, uh, layers panel and we can see it's strictly just one single path. There's no multiple uh, fills or, or strokes or anything like that um, going on with it. There's no, I should say there's no extra layers um, where we put a layer behind it and offset it. We could do that, but that's what the appearance panel is for. If we come down here and look here, we see the multiple fills uh, going on one behind another, and you can keep track of it there. Okay, let's change this purple fill to the white, which is the way we want it. And I've got this font that I've already created in outlines. I'm gonna put it right over the top here. I'm gonna select everything, use the align panel just to center it up. And I'm gonna come over here to the effects button inside the appearance panel, and I'm going to go to warp and uh, flag. Now you see when I did this, uh, when we choose that option, it kind of skews everything funny. The, the DNM isn't going the same, following the same path as the rest of the flag as far as the warp. And that's because we haven't grouped everything together. It's not one group. So we're going to go ahead and select it, hit Command or Control G. And now it's grouped. So now we're going to go ahead and go back to uh, warp flag. And now as you see, everything's running in the same direction. And we can give it as much of a flag warp or as little as we want. Let's uh, let's actually go this direction. Let's go with something like that. Okay, we got that done. Let's put put that up here out of the way, and let's work on this other shape. We're gonna uh, start with making a circle. We're gonna go to the circle the ellipse tool, and if I hold Alt and Shift and drag out from the center, I can make it the size I want. And first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to, in the appearance panel, add a, a stroke. And actually, there's already one there, so let's use that one. Okay, 
we want to add this stroke on top and we're going to offset that come up here to offset and click preview and we're going to take it down to a negative number and as we do that we see it come in and let's go right there or so let's make it a move it up a couple notches make it a little bit thicker that looks good right there all right and then we want to go ahead and add another fill and we're going to drag this underneath everything and we're going to make this orange just so we can see it offset the path and let's make it uh, something like that let's add another stroke and we want this stroke to be I think right where it's at above the, the orange layer we're going to offset that path as well the stroke a little bit we want it to be kind of centered here okay let's go with that let's change this to a uh, actually we want the stroke to be black we want this to be white I do believe okay so as you can see we've got all these fills and strokes going on in the appearance panel still if we look uh, look here in our layers panel we got just the one path going on. So we're doing good. All right, now we want to add this kind of scalloped edge that we see over here to the side. So what we're going to do, there's many, several different ways actually to do this, but we're going to grab the star tool and I'm going to drag it out. And as you see, when you normally open up the star tool, you're normally going to have a star shape. Something like, uh, like this with one extra point. Something like that. There we go, star shape. Uh, but what we, what we want to do is we want to give it all those edges. So to do that, we actually hit up on the arrow key, and we're going to get a whole bunch of them. And we don't want them that deep. We want them smaller. So maybe about uh, pretty small right there. And we want some more. So I'm going to keep adding some more. And a little bit shallower. Never have enough, right? Okay. Let's switch that so it shows up on the fill. And uh, I'm going to make this another color just so we can see it, actually. So this green here. And let's send this to the back. And let's make it larger so that we can see it. Let's make it the shape we want it. And a little bit smaller. All right, that looks pretty good. And if I hit that and hit the align tool, and get it exactly centered. Okay, but now we got all these sharp edges, so what do we do about that? Well, in the new Illustrator CC, the new update that just came out, if we just hit the direct selection tool, we get these little points on here, as you can see. And if I just drag one of those, I get the, uh, it's called live corners effect. I get it, get it down that way. But a lot of you won't have that, so what else you can do is you can select the shape, come up to effect, go into stylize and around corners, and you get this dialog box here. And you can do the same thing virtually. Um, you can update or, or choose uh, how rounded you want them to be by hitting the up and down. Let's let's do pretty rounded. So let's go with that. Um, we want to choose. Uh, let's change this back to a uh, a black now, since we got it looking the way we want it. Okay, looks pretty good there. And remember, in the if I click back on the shape, I can still adjust all these strokes and fills if I want. Okay, just for the uh, sake of time, I'm going to drag over some of these other elements that we've previously set up. Oops, that's not duplicated. And uh, you can come in here and in this appearance panel, 
and mess with uh, the shape, make sure that everything looks the way it should. Uh, adjust any kind of kerning or tracking or anything like that with your text, but most importantly the shape of everything. You might just make that a little smaller to fit. Okay. Well, let's pretend like we got that set up. Let's do this other one. This other text down here at the bottom. Same thing. Let's get it. Click back on the warp effect. I'm going to click both of these and I'm going to uh, click center in the middle so we have them lined up. Okay. And now, as you see, I have these little squirrely doodad things. Get them in the shape that we want them. And say swirl type effects. Put them where we think it looks good. And over here on the side I have these stars. Now these stars are made using the, the transform uh, palette. And if I actually have some ready to go just for sake of time. Let's, let's put these ones here. I'll show you how these are made. And again, this is another thing where there's three or so different uh, ways you can can make these. If I come in here, they're all connected together. But I come in again to the, uh, the the appearance panel, click transform, and in here you can click the preview button and adjust the, the shape of everything. That made it look way worse. So let's go back here, preview, and let's say we like that. Let's come in this one, make it the right color, transform, click on this preview box, and let's say that looks good for what we want. I can move it up just a tad. Okay. All right. And we have our ribbon that we've previously made, so let's just bring that down here. Let's uh, just put that down a notch. And you'll notice my stars here are running over the top of my banner. Let's uh, bring those down here. And this one as well. We're just going to bring them down in the layer stack so that they don't interfere. And of course, spend as much time as you want getting everything lined up, looking the way you want it. But that looks, uh, looks pretty darn good for a quick job. You can group it all together by hitting Control G. And now if you wanted to cut this with vinyl, cut this out of vinyl, you'd have to go through here and just expand as we've talked about before. Come in here and you can expand, uh, go under Object and Expand Appearance and everything will uh, be ready to cut. But other than that, that's a, a lesson in using the, the very powerful Appearance Panel and all the things that it can do. Um, all right, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, check us out on uh, Facebook, on our website, follow us on Twitter. All right, until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.